we're going to talk about Daniel Holtzclaw. Greg, why don't you tell us about him? Yeah, Daniel Holtzclaw was an Oklahoma City police officer who abused his badge, who sexually assaulted, was, was charged with 36 sexual assault charges, convicted of 18, got 263 years in prison. The Innocence Project has since said that's probably not true and they're trying to get him out, but his appeal has been denied. Do you remember her name? It was on the I description. Don't, I okay. don't. Okay. Um, do you make traffic stops normally after work? I don't, but in that case, I saw her swerve and whatnot, so I... I mean, me, I don't felt. After I, get off work. <laughs> I know. I mean, people I know, cop, cop say that right. is have a, you know, <laughs> whatnot right. to have the vision, whatever. But I felt like I needed to make that traffic stop. Okay. How was she? Was she respectful? Was she? She not? felt like was she, she was nervous and whatnot. And I'm like, why are you nervous? And she was even crying. I'm like, why are you crying? Why are you nervous? Whatnot. And she's just like, I don't know. I'm just nervous because you're a cop and I got pulled over. Like nothing you had to be nervous about. And I told her, I'm like, I don't really want to take you to jail for no SDL or anything. I just got off work. I'm tired. So with my officer, um, courtesy or whatnot, I said I'd go get that taken care of tomorrow. Let her on her way. And you don't have to. Fix, I'm not going to sit here and go, why didn't you right. take her to die? Well, that's, that's no, I don't care. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I'll keep this really quick. Um, he has a strong denial of her name as he turns his head and draws the left side of his mouth. Now, whether he knew her name or not doesn't really matter. That's one place he can go. What he has is some rehearsed information he's going to release here. And we see him using illustrators, but we're, we also quickly see him going into this braced position where his feet are locked. I want you to pay attention to his feet and how they look. Pointed in, pointed out, slammed together. He's bracing his body. And when you brace your body, your body doesn't like that. And he's a big muscular guy. So when he's standing there and that he sits in a place for a long time, that muscle starts to feel that. And when she gives him the out, and she's a good investigator, she gives him an out by giving him a break and saying something that lets him feel free. His leg pushes forward and he starts to try to relax that. He adapts on his legs. He almost does the whole batter on, on deck thing with his legs. And that's one of the first adapters you learn. It's a way to release nervous energy. He starts also to run down this mantra, swerve, didn't feel. And he does a nervous laugh when she asks him, do you typically pull over people when you're off duty? We're going to see a pattern here. This is the beginning of it. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, I agree with you. And he's locked down and he's wearing body armor. If you've never worn body armor before, it stuff's heavy. And it's hard to breathe, and he's still maintaining that lockdown. We see pacifying here, some genital protection, which we do when we're scared. It's covering this genital area, which is also covering the femoral artery. So our, our body automatically starts protecting arteries when we're scared. And we don't really have a good baseline for this person. So my analysis here, I speak for myself, will be mostly rooted in two things, which is one, the presence and the timing of stress behaviors that are well known to occur. And number two, the experience in the interviews and research I've independently conducted for 22 years. So a lot of this will be my opinion and some of it will be peer reviewed, uh, so to speak. In this clip, the interrogator is more nervous, I think, than the suspect. And this is something that we rarely see. There's some strong confirmation glance while they're trying to overtly relate to the officer about the pain uh, in the rear of having to do a DUI or having to process a DUI, do the paperwork, get the person in prison. That was a big, let's let's connect and, and see how we both understand this thing together. And it was, there was a confirmation glance after that, which it was probably a little cringy uh, in that environment. That's all I got. Mark, what do you got? Yeah. So as many of you are often note about me, it would seem that I've been living in a cave for the last few decades and I know nothing about this case at all. In fact, the first I heard of it was uh, what what Greg just told me uh, about, about it there. So uh, so um, I've gone into this completely clean. Let's see if I'm any good or not. Let's see if he's any good or not. Uh, so what have I got? Uh, symmetrical gestures. That's always nice to see. But the illustrators, uh, they're not very buoyant. They keep collapsing. 
down. Uh, Chase, to your point, that could be about this body armor bringing him down. Let's see. Let's see how that goes. So there's something depressed about it. Uh, palms will often come in as the gestures come down. So it's quite protective. And I agree, Chase, it often comes into a fig leaf. Quite protective there. Uh, here's the most important thing for me about this one. Do you remember her name? In that case, I saw her swerving one night. So she asks, do you remember her name? He says, in that case, I saw her, oh, he says, he says, no, he didn't know her name. In that case, I saw her swerving one night. Hang on a moment. So he's seen her on other nights then, which instantly causes me to go, have you been stalking her? How come one night you see her swerving? You've seen her on other nights as well. Sounds to me like it could be a stalking case. No, I have no idea how this turns out, apart from what Greg just said there. But uh, but sounds to me like we've got somebody stalking. Uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? All right, we're going to hear a lot of, of jargon. That's like police jargon. I'm not a cop, never been one, but I'm familiar with what some of that jargon is. And SDL is the suspended driver's license. So that's they talk about, about that a lot. That's one of the reasons he, 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 or one of the things he brings up about pulling her over. Let's pay attention to how close he's sitting to the wall right now, because when we get toward the end, he gets closer and closer and closer, almost like he's being sucked into that corner in the wall right there. We're seeing a liar on guard at this point. So the illustrators he's showing us, I agree with you guys about the, the body armor and 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 the, the guarding of the groin and that stuff. But when you have that stuff on, if you'll notice a lot of cops, what they'll do is they'll they'll that they take so they take these weird postures when they when they've got that stuff on because it hurts up under here and it's tough up under here that's why i see them hanging on like this and, and they'll put their hands up here to get them yeah you'll see their hands up here to get the in the front of their of their belt their and their thumbs pushed in because it takes that that uncomfortable stuff out from under your arms when you do that kind of thing so i think in this case what we're seeing we're not seeing a whole lot of adapters here. I'm with you, Greg. We're not seeing a whole lot of them. But what we are seeing as adapters, that's when those hands go slap into the lap. I think that's what happens because when you slap your lap, you can feel those muscles contract just a little bit. And I think that's all he's got room for at that point. So he's he can do that and it looks fine to them. It looks normal because they they're they were he's talking to cops. So they understand the whole the whole body armor thing. Um for the most part, his illustrators are small. You're right, Mark. They're very small. They're very tight. And as we know from Aldrich Bray, what he would, he found in his studies were if someone's not being honest, if they're being deceptive, in other words, uh, their illustrators tend to be smaller or not as big. We do see some large illustrators, but those things go up like this. And so a lot of that is hand slapped down to his lap. Uh, and a lot, like Greg was saying, a lot of the, the hand rubbing on his legs, those kind of things. And that's, that's very, um, that's indicative of being deceptive. You see that all the time in that. I'm not the only one who thinks that. There's a lot of other studies that, that show that as well. You can't count on that as, as an adapter. That's the point I'm getting to on this. You can't count on them because somebody rubs their leg that, that they're being deceptive, but boy, it sure shows up a whole lot. Um, we're hearing some fading facts in there as he talks. It gets quieter toward the end of what he's talking about. But to wrap all this up, we're seeing a liar on alert at this point. Do you remember her name? It was on the description. I know. Okay. Okay. Um, do you make traffic stops normally after work? I don't, but in that case, I saw her swerve and whatnot, so I... I mean, me, I don't... Felt. <laughs> I know, I mean, people I know, I cop, say that right. is have a, you know, whatnot, <laughs> right. to have the vision, whatever, but I felt like I needed to make that traffic stop. Okay. How was she? Was she respectful? Was she... She no, felt like she, she was nervous and whatnot, and I'm like, why are you nervous? And she was even crying. I'm like, why are you crying? Why are you nervous? What not? And she's just like, I don't know. I'm just nervous because you're a cop and I got pulled over. I'm like nothing you had to be nervous about. And I told her, I'm like, I don't really want to take you to jail for no SDL or anything. I just got off work. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. So with my officer, um, courtesy or whatnot, and so I go get that taken care of tomorrow. And, they're on their way. and you don't have to. Fix, I'm not going to sit here and go. Why didn't you right. take her to die? Take well, care that's, less. That's no, I don't care. What about pants? Nothing in her pants, as far as I can see. She was wearing tight jeans. So she said she pulled them down. I didn't see it. You didn't see her pull them down. I didn't see her pulling down pants. 
Could she have done it when you were up searching the car? She could have. I didn't Did have she her, have them on? I didn't have her handcuffed or anything. When you came back to the car and got her out, were her pants fastened? Were they? Yeah, everything. They was were still, up, and everything was still intact. So you never everything. saw her pull her pants down? No, I didn't. Why do you think she's making this up? I don't know. Did you write her a ticket? I didn't. I let her go, and I said, "I said I won't even arrest you for your no STL." Trying to figure out why she'd say that. I mean, I could see her saying it if you wrote her a ticket because she's pissed off. Right. Now, make it quite clear. If you saw her boobs, I don't care if she's flashing you. I did not see. You did her not breasts. see her boobies. No, I did not see her breasts. Is she saying you shined your light on her? I did not see her. Breasts. Where do you keep your flashlight? The left side, right here, right behind my radio. Did you have your flashlight out on the traffic stop? I did. When she was going like this, did you have your I flashlight didn't, on I didn't her? Like that. But I, as I'm out on the radio, like this, I have it right. Or position over us, but I didn't. Right, but did you have it on her when you're talking to her so you can see her? It's I mean, was it her. on her when she goes like this? Maybe she could have right. construed to see, it. To see her inside the vehicle. Was the dome light on? The dome light was not on. It didn't come on? I don't know how. Does that come on when you open your back door? Mm. It's been too long since I've been in a scout car. I can't recall, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't, th I don't think the on? back, I don't think it does. This was the dome okay. light. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so I love the interviewer's uh, gesture there, you know, as she kind of rattles her fingers there going, hmm, I can't really work out why this is happening. I think that's a signal to him. That's a signal to, to him of, of frustration. You know, we got to get this moving. You know, I, I got, we got to make sense of this. What's interesting from the angle that we have we can then see how she self-soothes after that. I think already she's feeling this isn't going as well as she would hope. This isn't quite as rapid as, as we would hope. Because this is like, let's move this along kind of gesture. And I'm quite active and enjoying this. And I'm enjoying the Inquisition. This for me says, I'm worried about this at the same time. So that's interesting. I also see when she looks away, he rubs his leg at the same time. Now, I think that indicates that he's noticed she's not watching him at that point, and it's a chance for him to self-soothe. So I'm concerned about his self-soothing as, uh, as she looks away. I'm also concerned about, just as you were saying, Chase, that she's looking not so confident ab about this, and that concerns me. But, but Chase, what, what do you think about it? I was laughing because I was doing those hand things under the table as you were discussing them. And I'm like, yeah, that is, that's what that feels like. <laughs> uh, there's one critical point here. There's a bunch of stuff here in the beginning, but right at this point where he's saying, I never saw her pull her pants down. He's slurring and softening speech at the same time when he's saying, no, I didn't. He didn't finish the word didn't at all. And guilty suspects are far more likely to do things like soften the severity of the words that we're using to describe a crime. They're also more likely to have vocal changes present uh, where three things typically happen. And number one is the fading volume. Or if you're uh, uh, in the bodylanguagetactics.com, you'll learn about fading facts a whole lot. And this, this is a critical thing you'll see a lot. Number two is words are less cohesive. And number three is more word usage. Instead of just no, they'll use more words. No, I didn't. No, I did not. And there's a, a doctor who wrote a book about this. I highly recommend. I get no kickback from this. His name is Dr. James Pennebaker. And this book is called The Secret Life of Pronouns. Fabulous book. I highly recommend it. Uh, but finally here, she asked, do you have your flashlight out on the traffic stop? He says, I did. And right there, there's no hesitation. There's a single head nod. He maintains eye contact. And he has some discomfort using words to describe shining the flashlight down her shirt. If you watch it again, when he's doing this shining motion with his hand, he's narrating with his hand, shining it down her shirt or miming that, there's some discomfort there. And I think you'll be able to see it. Not what do you think? Um, okay. I, th I think... When she says, 
uh, did did she pull her pants down? He answers way too fast. He said, "Well, I didn't see it," uh, and that that that's just for what he's been doing up so doing so far for the baseline we've got him so far. That's way too fast. And he's, and then she asked the interviewer, "Asked, uh, did you write her a ticket?" Again, way too fast. I'm not seeing this thing where she's afraid of uh, to talk to the guy or nervous at all. And keep in mind, there's a guy sitting right across from him when he's when he's rubbing his hand on his leg. So I don't think he's sneaking a hand rub in there because that one guy is, is sitting right in front of him is like I'm facing you right now. So I, I think it's just nervousness. And that's the way he's adapting. I agree with you, Mark. That's the way he's adapting right there. But I, I'm not seeing the nervousness with her. You guys are seeing I'm seeing her step into this. Um, the way she should. This looks the way it should to me. I could, I could. It all looks. It, it looks the way it should. Greg, what do you think? Well, guys, if you go watch this whole video, I, I think what you're catching is she's projecting, and that's what I think you're seeing, Mark, because she's talented. If you go watch this whole video, she starts off building rapport, and yeah. she's like potty mouth bad to try to get him to talk, and it just I, I, I cut most of that out. So I think what you're seeing is she transitions to make him feel a little more comfortable and what is beautiful about this is he does a couple of dumb things number one he's locked down if you don't believe he's locked down watch those feet bracing him back in the corner a good interrogation room could fix this if you got into where he had to move around and he was not wedged in there like you know a little fat potato stuck in the corner then he would be in a better place but she does a couple of really cool things he does a nervous laugh and does some throwaway words when he says he didn't see her. There are two things that are incompatible in his denials. He says, no, I didn't see her take her pants down. And then he says in his voice to your point, Chase, and to your point, Mark, his voice drops. He does some kind of a fry and he says, I did not see her breast. Hmm, hold on. Which one of those things is true? Are they both true? Does he switch patterns casually that way? Most of us don't. So I would be hanging on there for a second. She's pretty damn good at picking up on source leads in later videos. So I wonder if she picked up on that. I don't know. Uh, but when you see him there, he's got his forehead up and lilting at the end as he says, no, I didn't write her a ticket. I think that's his normal communication style. If you'll pay really close attention to him, I think what you're gonna find here is when he's prepared something, he uses his hands, he illustrates. When he runs out of data, you hit it dead on mark. Those hands drop and then he starts to adapt. If you wanna know whether he's braced in the corner or not, really easy, watch him. The minute she gives him that freedom to say, does the dome light come on? That's non-pertinent. In interrogator speak, that's non-pertinent questions. When she does that, he relaxes and takes that foot out of the brace position, moves out, adapts because his leg is feeling that pressure and the stress. But I'll go back to something else you covered, Scott, early. His head is tilted further in the corner now. So we're seeing him braced and pushing away. And I think we could be seeing a combination of a ploy by an interrogator that looks like X or Y. That's what I got. What about pants? Nothing in her pants as far as I can see. She was wearing tight jeans. So she said she pulled them down. I didn't see it. You didn't see her pulling down? I didn't see her pulling down pants. Could she have done it when you were up searching the car? She could have. I didn't Did have she her, have them on? I when, didn't have her handcuffed or anything. When you came back to the car and got her out were her pants fastened were they yeah everything they was were still, up and everything was still intact so you never saw her pull her pants down no i didn't why do you think she's making this up i don't know did you write her a ticket i didn't i let her go and i said i said i want to arrest you for your no sdl trying to figure out why she'd say that i mean i could see her saying it if you wrote her a ticket because she's pissed off right now, let me make it quite clear. If you saw her boobs, I don't care if she's flashing you. I did not see you her You did not breasts. see her boobies? No, I did not see her breasts. Is she saying you shined your light on her? I did not see her breasts. Where do you keep your flashlight? The left side right here, right behind my radio. Did you have your flashlight out on the traffic stop? I did. When she was going like this, did you have your I flashlight on her? like that. But I, as I'm out on the radio like this, I have it right or position over us, but I didn't. Right, but did you have it on her when you're talking to her so you can see her? Just I mean, was it her. on her when she goes like this? Maybe she could have right. construed to see, it. to see her inside the vehicle. Was the dome light on? The dome light was not on. It doesn't come on? I don't know how. Does that come on when you open your back door? Mm. 
It's been too long since I've been in a scout car. I can't recall to be honest with you. I don't, th I don't think the mind? back, I don't think it does. That's what it's supposed to dumb mm -hmm. Officers do too. So, well, Daniel, this is this is kind of one of the things that uh, we kind of bring you in here to right. see how truthful you are. Right. Now you need to kind of kind of think of a few different things here. Okay. Okay. We pulled up a lot of video around that area okay. after these allegations. Okay. Okay. She also have a saint exam, which you know what that consists of. Right. There's a reason why we wanted your buckles. Okay. Okay. Now, I mean, we can go through a couple different things mm -hmm. of why we've got you in here, but you sure there's nothing you want to? Nothing. So if we go off the video and watch that, right. you're still going to stick with your story. Yes, sir. If we go off DNA? DNA as well. Should we show you the video? If yes. You, you do want to see it? Do I? Yes. So, there's nothing that you everything that I recall of that night is what I what was I asked and everything. That's what happened. If I, have I maybe not asked enough questions? I think everything covered as far as that. Chase, what do you got? This is a classic bait question, and it's done well. It's done well. We were collecting lots of data, and is there any reason we would see X? Is kind of the basic formula for that. But during the video question, you guys might disagree with me, but it's pretty good. He's pretty good in response to the video question. And if and guilty people were more likely to uh, see people to ask about the video, like what video is it? Where is it from? And negotiate about what they should say, ask for a lawyer, probe the interrogator for more information. And his head nod and answer had no hesitation or breaks in eye contact, which I would have expected to see. And when they're uh, talking about a sane uh, exam. exam, this is a sexual assault nurse examiner. And if you've been sexually assaulted, I'll give you a couple of tips here. This might save your life and might put somebody in jail if this ever happens to you. But number one, don't take a bath or a shower. Try not to use the toilet. Don't change your clothes. Don't comb your hair. Don't clean up the area where you're assaulted. And that will help this investigation. That will help to catch this bad guy. The interrogator's level of nervousness around bringing up these questions is kind of obvious here. There's some, we see pacifying, we see artery protection. I'll let you be the judge where the artery is. We protect arteries when we're scared. And we're also gonna see fidgeting which is just expending or burning off some excess energy. I've got a bunch here, but uh, won't, uh, won't bore you too much. Greg, go ahead. Yeah, this is one of those great examples of a source lead. Remember, I always talk about when you're talking to somebody, they tell you what you should ask them when you're interrogating someone, and he does a great job of it. He goes to everything that I recall that night that was asked is what was asked, and she goes, hold on. Did he just say, I've told you everything you asked me? And she goes right after him. And that's a beautiful thing when she does that. Because if you watch him, he's got his hands together. Now he's in what I call his stress fort. He's back in the wall. His feet are blocked. His feet are together. They're together. They're like in the position of attention, pointing toward that, the guy who's asking a question. And he goes to some softening and respect when he says, sir, I'm not sure that may be a senior guy that is somebody in the department, maybe the reason. But you see his feet locked tight, you see his hands braced, you see him flex those thumbs when, when he gets cornered. And it is, he's starting to lose language is a reason he can't finish a sentence to say, I what I recall is uh, everything that was asked. And he's doing a little bit of that front of the mouth talking as he's being respectful. He's not asking questions back. He's only responding to what he's gotten, and he's licking his lips. There's stress. If he were not in that little wedged-in fort that he's got, we'd see a whole lot more movement. And if we had him sitting on a table or something where his feet were hanging, I bet you we would start to see his feet pointing toward the door. But watch his feet from here on out. Uh, Scott, what do you got? All right. I don't, I don't think they should have asked the question. When he answers the question about the, the cameras and stuff, I'd, I think he I think he he knows there are no questions there. I think she made or I think they made a mistake during that because you don't go in and, and do it like that. The good um, 
in my opinion, the good bait question is, would there be any reason that you would be, we would have any footage of you on camera? They come on saying that we've got camera footage and we're go- they may have it, but I don't think they do. And I think he knows they don't. And that's why he looks so confident with that answer. That, that really, that really, but they're really good. So they, maybe they do have it and I'm missing it because they're, they're great uh, interviewers, but I don't know that, that, that's the only thing that rubbed me wrong on this. Now, when he says everything I recall happened, by using the word recall, he doesn't say no, he should be outraged at this point. He should say, no, you got camera footage. Let's get that in here, man, and be loud about it. Uh, he, he wouldn't be saying, well, sure, I'd like to see it. You don't, you know, you ask if they want to, would you like to see that? Yeah, sure. I'll take a look at it. No, you say, yeah, you get that in here right now, man. Let's go over it. I want to show you that's not what happened at all. If you have camera footage, this is over, man. Let's take a look at it. That doesn't happen. That really... So he's not acting the way he should in this. He's confident because he know he's probably sure there's no video. But if he, but at the same time, he should have said, "Yeah, man, let's get a look at. It. I want to see what's going on." Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I believe the male interviewer here knows that bait question didn't get the effect that he was hoping to get because he 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 launches that bait question, doesn't get the gets the response, okay, and then the interviewer tuts afterwards there's a there's a vocal click afterwards he's upset that he didn't quite get the result the female there i'm with you chase it's interesting there's she's self-soothing right in here for a long long time at the same time her foot is going 10 to the dozen there so there's a massive difference between what her feet are showing and what her thumb is doing on her wrist there as well I'm going to suggest that good as as these two are, they have somebody in the room here who is not responding as in the way that others that have been in that room will tend to respond. Okay, I have a feeling that this is not going for them as deftly or or fast or it's not it's they're not seeing the kind of responses they would like to see on any one day where you go let's go in there let's get this done you know and things would move along quite swiftly it's not i think a normal day for them because we're seeing responses we're seeing conflict in the female there and we got that tut afterwards that it didn't hit just as they'd like it to hit there that's what i got on that one <laughs> That's funny. What were you saying? What were you All saying? I was saying is this guy's locked down pretty damn good. I mean, his body language compared to a lot of senior guys. I don't think he's been a cop but five years, but you know, he's learned a lot of stuff in five years. I, yeah. 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 He's a, he's, a, he's a player. I'm not seeing this. I, I think what we're seeing with her is excitement. I think it's what we're Could seeing. Be. I think she's trying to contain yeah. excitement. I don't think she's nervous. I don't think the other guy's Could nervous be. either. Same, I same think, chemical. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. 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 all I'm saying is there's conflict. There's conflict between what her foot is doing and the self soothing here, which could be to calm down excitement or it could be. I don't know what it, I'm not a mind reader, but yeah. but uh, but I know there's conflict going on. Well, there. Th- then the other thing, Mark, is I, I will tell you that being an interrogator and being in the room and trying to get somebody you're animated as all hell yeah. mentally when you're doing it. You're like, you know, so some people bleed, others don't. And if she doesn't think he's he's reading her, I guess she wouldn't care. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Little officers there too. So. Well, Daniel, this is this is kind of one of the things that uh, we kind of bring you in here to right. see how truthful you are. Right. Now you need to kind of kind of think of a few different things here. Okay. Okay. We pulled up a lot of video around that area okay. after these allegations. Okay. Okay. She also have a saint exam, which you know what that consists of. Right. There's a reason why we wanted your buckles. Okay. Okay. Now, I mean, we can go through a couple different things mm-hmm. of why we've got you in here, but you sure there's nothing you want to? Nothing. So if we go off the video and watch that, right. you're still going to stick with your story. Yes, sir. 
if we go off DNA. All right, as well. Should we show you the video? If yes. You, you do want to see it? Do I, yes. So there's nothing that you... Everything that I recall of that night is what I, what was I asked and everything. That's what happened. If I, have I maybe not asked enough questions? I think everything covered as far as that. Well, I think you really, in all honesty, you need to really double think about this. I mean, I, I gotta be honest with you, it doesn't look really good. Okay. okay. I mean, in what you originally thought, detectives just don't roll up in there for no reason. Right. Okay. And we just didn't pick you out. out. Okay. Right. I mean, there's a whole lineup there. Mm-hmm. Okay. But there's definitely enough here to bring you in here to start questioning you. Right. Okay. We knew you were on that stop. Right. We knew you were there. Mm -hmm. And we can watch a whole lot of actions being performed while you were there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's why she was trying to give you every out on the whole booby thing. Right. Okay. Now, is there any reason, any reason at all, even from whatever angle, because, you know, it takes a little bit to clear up those videos. Right. But any reason why your penis would be out? No. Nothing? Nothing. Okay. All right, I'll go first on this one. I think this is a classic bait question. This is the bait question. Is there any reason that da 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 And I think at this point, I don't know, maybe they do have it. It doesn't feel like they do. It doesn't feel like they do, but she's so excited she can hardly stand it. She's rubbing on her head and everything else. I really do think that's what we're seeing is the excitement there because they know they've got this guy because they've got a lot more information than they've let him know so far about what's happened before he got there. With, with which we'll talk about in just a few minutes. But I think she's excited. I think the other guy, and he is the detective we can't see or, or the guy we can't see, he's doing such a good job. He's going right down the line of how you, uh, to approach these questions and everything. It, it's almost like, uh, it, well, I think he's doing a really great job on that. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so um, I think the issue for the uh, subject here is is the exam. Because on the exam, we get the elbow popping out. I can't remember what you call that, Chase, but I think you have a a, a, a name uh, for that one. If it's coming to mind, pop it in now. What's what's your name for that? It's a pugilistic or joust I love gesture. It. I love it. Joust gesture. Yeah, so lovely. So he jousts on the exam. That would suggest to me there's a there's a problem in that for him. He, you know, so that's interesting. He's anti the exam. Same time, he's resisting quite well. I, I get what everybody's saying about he's moving towards the, the, the wall and he's, and, and we could say, look, he's locked himself down. It's very hard. It's clearly a lockdown because it's very hard to stay in that position for a long, long time. It's not a very natural position at all to steeple with your thumbs for that amount of time. So he's clearly locking it down, but he's getting quite a good result, I think. Um, Here's my problem with the idea that they have camera evidence. These videos are not helping. Well, what videos and how are they not helping? We're going to do the comparing and all that. What are you talking about? Compare what to what and what's all that? You know, why? why, why? What, what's that about? But it's not looking good so far. It's not looking good. You, you're doing antithesis there. It's... It's, uh, you know, if I were listening to that, I'd be thinking, you don't have anything, do you? You just don't have anything. And my worry would be on the exam. And I think that's why what he, what's happening here. His worry is on the exam and, and they're leaking for me too much that they don't have anything there. I don't think they'd be using that language if they had anything solid. Uh, Greg, what do you think? Yeah, if I were in a situation like this and given the opportunity to milk as much information out of the investigator as I could, I would do exactly what he's doing. I would lock down, I would brace. I probably wouldn't do it physically because I'm looking for body language tells. But this investigator is bleeding information in the beginning. I agree with you, Scott, his question is good, but he has filler words in the beginning. And he says, in all honesty, double think this. That's mm -hmm. time for him to think. If I'm sitting across from him, I know that he's trying to think. And he's doing, remember I say, 
good interrogator looks like a swan, but their feet are paddling like hell into the water. His feet are paddling like hell to do this. Then she's smart. Here's where I do think she's talented. She leans into him and gives him a break, the good cop, bad cop thing. And you see a little bit of a break in that lockdown. But his blink rate goes up a little. I can see a little bit of it there. And then he, this guy drops to a grunt to answer every question. It's barely a syllable. And then the one thing that I noticed that is interesting for me is there's disheartened response and sound that barely comes out of his mouth when he's saying no and nothing. It sounds a lot, Scott, like when you and I were talking to, you know, when I hear that, that makes me want to dig in. But he's doing a great job of forcing them to give information, and he's giving none. That's powerful. Chase, what do you got? This is a great example of him doing something that the this is the read technique is what we're seeing. We're, we're and I think direct quote from the read training is building anxiety associated with deception. And what they're doing here is called data stacking. This is I'm stacking known data with suspected or assumed data together so that it has more credibility. And then there's the bait question, which is great. And if you ever hear these words yourself, stop talking and get a lawyer. <laughs> There's not much behavior to show here. Uh, there's a lot. And Scott, I agree with you about the excitement there. Uh, when I'm saying nervous, I, I refer to the exact same chemical. Okay. I refer to uh, adrenaline. Uh, and an Olympic athlete where it's excitement or an amateur where it's like I'm worried. Uh, yeah. So I think yeah, absolutely there's excitement there that she's thinking that there's something around the corner, that there's going to be yeah. some confession or something. I think there's a, actually a, a kind of a confident denial going off of his limited baseline that we have so far, that we've seen so far. And this is my opinion as I watched it this morning. And so far, it looks like a confident denial. But we're going to show you, I think, in the next few videos why it's not. Well, I think you really, in all honesty, you need to really double think about this. I mean, I, I gotta be honest with you, it doesn't look really good. Okay. okay. I mean, in what you originally thought, detectives just don't roll up in there for no reason. Right. Okay. And we just didn't pick you out. out. Okay. Right. I mean, there's a whole lineup there. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there's definitely enough here to bring you in here to start questioning you. Right. Okay. We knew you were on that stop. Right. We knew you were there. Mm -hmm. And we can watch a whole lot of actions being performed while you were there. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's why she was trying to give you every out on the whole booby thing. Right. Okay? Now, is there any reason, any reason at all, even from whatever angle, because, you know, it takes a little bit to clear up those videos. Right. But any reason why your penis would be out? No. Nothing? Nothing. Okay. Now, in doing this, you know how saying exams work, and I ain't got to explain about DNA or anything like that. Right. Now, I didn't say you had sex with her. Right. Okay. But getting Okay. That is a different story. Right. Okay. You see my concern here. I'm just listening to you, sir. I know. But I'd rather listen to you and you start talking. That's all I have, sir. Do, are we are we gonna get something from the same exam? Go with the same exam. Do and do you understand that you don't have to full blown to get something out of the same exam? Right. We can get skin cells, we can get pre do all that and still get DNA. Right. And or did your penis? No, it did not. Okay. Because DNA will clear it up and here's the deal too. I it we can fall on the sword. Okay. And say I screwed up or something, but if we say we didn't do it, we didn't do it, we didn't do it, and then the DNA comes back and says he did it then we have a huge problem. Right. We're here to give you the chance to fall on the sword so we don't, we don't want a huge problem. We don't want a huge problem for you. 
Right. It's this is time. It's time. If you're, if it touched her mouth, if it touched the inside of her mouth for one second, two seconds, three seconds, you got to tell us now. Look, there's there's a huge difference. There's a huge difference in between uh, being forced mm -hmm. and some and, old girl who yeah. wants it. Right. Okay. We've had plenty of that. We, right. we, we get that. Right. We know that. Okay. But there is, there is, there is a big difference. Okay. Right. But I'm just saying, you know, these videos ain't helping. And I mean, we're going to do the comparing and all that. Okay. Okay. But uh, it's not looking good so far. Okay. Okay. And I don't want to see anybody go down for something that right. there was no force. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, he starts off, this investigator is painting a picture. Chase, you're dead on. He's stacking everything against him. He's trying to talk him down into this position where he's got nowhere to go. And he does a good job of talking to him that way. And if you want to know how I know that, it's because he's internalizing. Look at me. He's having an internal conversation with himself as his eyes drop down to his left while the guy's talking. Now, he is either tr thinking, how do I counter this? Or he's internalizing it and turning it into something useful for the investigator. It doesn't matter either way. He's impacting this guy. The guy's not just rigid sitting there. I think he does a great job of being father-like. There's probably something associated with him being senior in the, in the department. The reason he keeps referring to him as sir, but he projects and actually shows you what he's thinking when he does a nervous laugh and he says, I'm just listening to you, sir. He's telling him exactly what he's thinking. But that nervous laugh comes up again. We've heard this about three times and it's always around things that it shouldn't be. And then that's all I have, sir. And he does a quick head nod like, okay, that's it. When they ask you, what are we going to find when we use the sane? No is the answer, not go with the sane. No, you're not gonna find anything about me. There's nervous laughter again. Then he tucks his head and he leans back into the corner. We also see a little bit of jaw working. Mammals do that when we're thinking. It's just part of what we do. And you can see when pressure's rising, that happens. But he takes a deep breath. He backs into the corner. And then that officer tries to release it a little bit. This is just showing you that he's got a posture established of bracing himself and holding himself in that corner. I would love to see what happens when you pull him out of that corner because they've given him an out here. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so again, the female interrogator here is always full of some kind of conflict for me. I don't know why. Uh, if she were in some kind of professional conversation with me, I'd call it out and I'd go, hey, here's what I'm seeing about you. And, you know, what's going on for you right now? We get splayed hand on the table and the other hand protects the, protects the wrist joint and holds it down. That for me is a conflict going on. And we'll see other conflicts going on the way. Again, I'm not a mind reader. I don't know why she's always in conflict and what the conflict is. But if it were a professional conversation between the two, she's in some kind of session with me or interview with me, that is something that I would go on and go, so I'm really curious, what's going on for you right, right now? Um, now, for him, I think as a generalization, the subject here, the denials are pretty good and strong. They, and I'm sure people will pick them apart and, and absolutely. But as a generalization, seem pretty strong and he's continuing with this steepling here as well. Now, again, what I've said before is that's hard to do. That's You've got to make that your job. So now I start to go, clearly now this is your job. To, to nail this one down, button it down, and to come across with as strong a denials as you possibly can. And my guess is you probably have an idea of what those should sound like. So now it feels to me like he's definitely in this performance of resistance tactics. And as a generalization, his tactics are not bad. I mean, he's doing relatively well in this situation. Uh, Chase, what are your thoughts? We see a lot more read methods here uh, in play. And some of the ones we're seeing here are minimizing the situation, projecting the blame onto someone else, socializing it to where people understand, emphasizing the truth. So those are some of the key elements of, of read. And Daniel seems confident in his answers and seems confident about DNA a little bit as he was about the made up video. So he knew he probably knows the video thing is is made up. And as a quick note, if you're seeing closed off behavior here, you're probably also seeing 
uh, how most police are going to interact with internal affairs personnel, even when they're not under some kind of investigation. But they're comparing things, a oral thing versus actual intercourse. They're comparing uh, something willing versus something that's not willing. And this is an interrogation technique called the alternative question or alternative phrasing, where I'm saying, are, are you either uh, this guy who's done this 60,000 times or did you just make one little mistake? And that's what we're seeing right there. And we're still lacking uh, firmly stated denials, and we're also lacking emotions. The biggest emotion that we're really lacking here is anger. Innocent people get angry. Guilty people get angry. Innocent people stay angry. Guilty people's angry goes away relatively quickly. So I, the only critique I have of the interrogator here is falling on the sword is not a very good metaphor or choice of, choice of words to pick for him. Uh, him doing the right thing is dying on some sword. And in the end here, Scott, you said it before we we went live here. Uh, this is the point where the, the nodding started right at this point. I'd love for you to talk about that. All right. Uh, his comf- is, is not is, 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 a, is not a confirmation nod. Uh, there, they'll, I think there'll be an argument about whether it is or not. But usually the confirmation nod, you say, I didn't do it. And they'll be doing like that. His isn't going with the words. His is, his, is, his is just up and down, up and down. There's no uh, it's not in sync like an illustrator would be as you as you speak. That kind of thing. So, yeah, I don't think that's happening when it comes to, to the hands on the desk, Mark. I think if her if her fingers hadn't been splayed out, I would say, yeah, there might be a problem there. But the, the more space you have between your fingers as you speak with someone, as you know, then the, the more confident they are with what they're talking about. Even though she's slapping there on the table, I got the feeling when I was watching that she was trying to creep up slowly to him so she could put her hand on him. I just knew that she was going to reach out and say, man, you know, you got to talk. You got to tell us what happened. But she didn't do it. She was she was right there as in the, when we were in here watching this. We, we talked about that a second. But she was so close to doing that. And when he, when Hoskall says, that's all I have, sir, he would have a whole lot more to say, like Chase was saying, than that. He just wouldn't say, that's all I've got to say, sir. No. You're going to be mad when you go into something like that and you tell somebody that you know something is is one of the things you look for when you say, hey, when you sit down and say, we, they know you did this. There's no question about you doing it. I'm sure you're trying to find out what happened. Why did you do this? If you start off with why did you do this and that person gets mad, it's easy to look mad. Like you're saying, Chase, it's so simple. But the person who didn't do it, they're going to stay mad because they're, they're, they'll know they're there because somebody put them there. Somebody from their group of people said, no, that's the guy that did it or the girl, that the woman that did it. And so they're going to be mad at that person, too. And their anger is going to stay there throughout that. And they're going to keep going back to that. None of that here. Nothing whatsoever in this thing. And again, they bring up the sane exam. Now, keep in mind that that's the same thing as a rape kit. When you hear people say, oh, they use a rape kit, that's what they're talking about. Because it's, an, it's an, uh, a nurse who is specialized, has extra training to go along and do this as well, to, to get in there and be able to grab that evidence and collect it the right way to help put that person in prison uh, at the end. I'm getting all worked up here. I shouldn't be as worked up as I am. I'm going to try to calm down a little bit. Anyway, so that's what I'll I'll end there then before I get. So Scott, that might be the conflict that I'm talking about because because that's, that's right. what I said is that is that yep. she's confident they're splayed yep. and she's got her other hand over the wrist holding that hand back. Ah, there Maybe you go. she does, which is the conflict that I'm talking about. Maybe she does want to go out and touch, but oh. there's conflict as to is this the right time to do it? Is this the best time? To do it, and what I don't get is that is that conflict between the two. You know? Okay, I see what you're saying. I got yeah. you. I got you. Yeah, that makes total. I think you nailed it. That makes total sense there. Yeah, man. Now, in doing this, you know how saying exams work, and I ain't got to explain about DNA or anything like that. Right. Now, I didn't say you had sex with her. Right. Okay. But getting okay, that is a different story. Right. Okay. You see my concern here. I'm just listening to you, sir. I, I know, I'm, but I'd rather listen to you and you start talking. That's all I have, sir. Okay. Are we, are we going to get something from the same exam? 
go with the set exam. Do, and do you understand that you don't have to full blown to get something out of the same exam? Right. We can get skin cells, we can get pre and do all that and still get DNA. Right. And or did your penis? No, it did not. Okay. Because DNA will clear it up and here's the deal too. I it we can fall on the sword. Okay. And say I screwed up or something, but if we say we didn't do it, we didn't do it, we didn't do it, and then the DNA comes back and says, he did it, then we have a huge problem. Right. We're here to give you the chance to fall on the sword so we don't, we don't want a huge problem. We don't want a huge problem for you. Right. It's, this is time. It's time. If you're, if it touched her mouth, if it touched the inside of her mouth for one second, two seconds, three seconds, you got to tell us now. Look, there's there's a huge difference. There's a huge difference in between uh, being forced mm -hmm. and some and, old girl who yeah. wants it. Right. Okay. We've had plenty of that. We, right. we, we get that. Right. We know that. Okay. But there is, there is, there is a big difference. Okay. Right. But I'm just saying, you know, these videos ain't helping and... I mean, we're going to do the comparing and all that. Okay. Okay. But uh, it's not looking good so far. Okay. Okay. And I don't want to see anybody go down for something that right. there was no force. Enough of them. Okay. Cases that it didn't happen. The problem is, is where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's why we wanted to hear your version of the story. Right. Whether we just go off of what we see and and I mean whatever this tests out as right okay but so I'm I'm sticking with my story I'm, I'm okay <laughs> okay on the video are we gonna see her boobies shouldn't see her boobs I didn't see her boobs okay are we gonna see her pull her pants down I didn't see her pull her pants down okay. are we gonna see your pants out no nope. are we gonna see your pants go in her mouth no are we going to get any DNA to that? No. Let's switch up for a second. You had another girl, okay? Mm -hmm. You probably don't, not necessarily going to remember the name, but her name is Terry Morris, okay? Black female. Um, supposedly you promised her a ride to the city rescue mission. Did this ring a bell? No. You did a, a traffic stop with her. Uh, she thought you ran for warrants, was clicking, you drove her around. Mm -hmm. no. name, name doesn't, I don't recall a name like that. And she's claiming the same thing, the exact same thing. And here again, for whatever reason, the things are pointing at you again. Right. Now this was before even this incident this morning. All right, Chase, what do you got? The denials are semi-confident here. <laughs> Only slightly worried denials showing stress is when she asks if they're going to find DNA. There's a little swallow muscle movement here. But the denial that he makes is only about her name. The denial is only about her name, which is a little suspicious. And this locked down behavior isn't suspicious <laughs> on its own. So remember, a lot of what we're looking for are clusters of behavior, which indicate likelihood of deception. So the lack of denial here for the second woman is more telling of guilt. And him being truthful at certain moments does not equate to him being innocent. So let's get that completely out of the way. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, let's talk a little bit about this lockdown. <clears throat> I firmly agree with you that lockdown alone means nothing. However, when he's talking about something he's prepared, he's not locked down. His hands are moving. It's when he's in a bind that he has his hands and all that locked down. I'll, I'll give you a couple of things to look for here. If you've ever been in a situation where you just have been lambasted, beaten to hell up verbally, and you're in a situation where you can't do anything about it, you lock down. It's what humans do. We lock down and we sit there. I, I have, when I was in the old guard in Arlington Cemetery, I got my 
chewed by a sergeant major for 45 minutes one time. You know how I stood? With my hands behind my back, listening and going, yes, sergeant major, no sergeant major. That's what you do, what you can't do anything else. He's talking to IA, he has no choice. If you're a rage-filled person, you're also smart enough to know you don't let the monster out. You don't let the trigger hit you because when it does, you're gonna do something and you're really gonna look guilty then. So that containment may be, he may be a hothead, not saying he is, can't tell, but that lockdown gives a, a person who's hot-headed the ability to sit dead still rather than letting that trigger happen. We all know when the amygdala hits, what comes after that. So if you pay attention to him, he's nodding along with this guy, and then his face kind of recognizes what's going on. He's calling out someone else. The guy says, she said, she said exactly the same thing you did on this first one. Remember, the organism does what makes the organism successful. If this guy was doing sexual assaults and had a method of operation to do it, people are ritualistic around food, sex, and sleep. It's just the way our brains are wired. If you pay attention to this, you'll start to see he makes two really interesting fumbles here. He says, I'm sticking to my story. That's an odd choice of words to say, I'm not guilty. He also says, you shouldn't see that. And then when she says, are we going to see your, the weakest response possible comes out. It's another, no, it's a disappearing, or as you would say, Scott, fading facts. He breaks eye contact, which is asking him specifically about his, his body parts, her mouth, and DNA. And then he goes back to the mail. He, his blink rate increases. He takes that bone that was thrown and says, I don't remember her name. That's it. He doesn't go. I didn't know her. Never met her. So we got a problem here. Scott, what do you got? What did you do to get yelled at for 45 minutes? Let's have that. <laughs> well, it's kind of a dumb thing. This guy was a hot head. Everybody knew he was hot headed. And I was helping somebody out. Another sergeant major whose daughter needed an ID card. I was trying to handle it. And I turned around and said to this sergeant major, I was on the phone and said, hey, sergeant major, you got to do it yourself. This sergeant major happens to walk in the room and hear me tell the sergeant major he has to do something for himself. And he just melts down. Uh -huh. And the other sergeant major standing there going, hey, uh, JD, um, um, trying to calm him down. No good. And he screamed at me for, no kidding, 45 minutes. That was a record for a while. Jeez. All right. Were you dating when the you're in the old something? guard, you don't, you don't talk back. You stand. Uh. It's got right. uh, Jay Leno did call. He said he wants his outfit back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, this is a mistake. <laughs> I can't get this thing to work. <laughs> oh, Lord. That's funny. Okay, here's what I'm saying. His answers are very uh, – he's sitting really still. His answers are short. One-word answers, one, two, or just tick, tick, these little, little pops of answers. And then again, you're right, Greg, where he says, I'm sticking to my story. That's weird, but he does that hand slap thing again as, as he's adapting. He does to get on the boobs question. And then uh, with any of these questions that, that you would get, anyone would get, you'd be animated at this point. You'd be all fired up. You'd be angry. You'd be outraged and nothing. Now, when they bring up Terry Morris, this is when he knows for sure he's had it, man. This is when he gets real still at that point. He's almost like freeze framed there. If you go back and look at him, just really he knows it's up at that point. The odds of somebody of, of you being in trouble for something and them talking to you about it and then having saying as well, and you know, it's a fact because you did it. Them saying, hey, guess what else? Somebody else said the exact same thing that this girl said or this woman said. So what do you think about that? The odds of that happening are astronomically low of two different people who don't know each other outside of that, that happening to them. So it He's on the, again, the liar on guard. This guy is in big trouble and he knows it. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so I agree. He's locked down and he's locked down hard at the moment. I'm just super interested in the drama between him and the female uh, interrogator here because I think her questions at the start aid his locking down. I think she knows she's got some good, strong kind of hints and questions going on there and then it hands over to the male and i think she starts to lock down at that point could be all for, for all kinds of reasons i don't know whether it's about she's super excited and she wants another go at him she thinks she's onto something or she's holding herself back because she wants to move away from the script that they have or certainly the process that they have i think there's all kinds of reasons but very interesting how um, 
how there's some some slight mirroring between the two. And it could be that. It could be her going, okay, so he's he's being still and locking down. I'll do that as well. I'll join him on that. I don't know what it's about, but it's interesting for me. Enough of them, okay, cases that it didn't happen. The problem is, is where we're at right now, mm -hmm. okay? And that's why we wanted to hear your version of the story, right. whether we just go off of what we see and, and I mean, whatever this tests out as, right. okay? But so I'm, I'm sticking with my story. I, I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> On the video, are we gonna see her boobies? Shouldn't see her boobs. I didn't see her boobs. Okay. Are we gonna see her pull her pants down? I didn't see her pull her pants down. Okay. Are we gonna see your out? No. Nope. Are we gonna see your go in her mouth? No. Are we gonna get any DNA to that? No. Let's switch up for a second. You had another girl, okay? Mm -hmm. You probably don't, not necessarily going to remember the name, but her name is Terry Morris, okay? Black female. Um, supposedly, you promised her a ride to the city rescue mission. Did this ring a bell? No. You did a, a traffic stop with her. Uh, she thought you ran for warrants. Was it clicking? You drove her around. Mm -hmm. no. Name doesn't. I don't recall a name like that. Okay. Well, she's claiming the same thing, the exact same thing. And here again, for whatever reason, the things are pointing at you again. Right. Now this was before even this incident this morning. She didn't offer that. Mm -hmm. She was nervous. Like I said, she cried earlier. Did what she did cry you? as soon as you? stopped her or after she was in your car when did she start crying i think in the car yeah what made you let her go number one to be to be honest yeah. i want to get home then why'd you pull her over it, <laughs> like i said earlier just cop swerve dy and if Call i had if i had, if I, had if I know if i had to do it i would have done it but i didn't think that she was past the legal limit That's just, I mean, I just would avoid that if I, did you at any time, you said you picked her up around 50th and Lincoln. I mean, when you it's saw just, her swerve, right. did you at any time, were you always behind her or did you pull up beside her to maybe see who was in the car and then no, pull back she, behind her? She was at 50th and Lincoln, swerve, and I was behind her, so I felt behind her. And then wait you, till were you ever away. beside her? No. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so I think we see a big tongue jut from him right at the start of this. I think there's some attrition happening. I think there's some breaking happening there. And I think the female interviewer knows that at this point. I'm gonna, I reckon the conflicts that we see in her, because we see them again, we see the, the, the hand being comforted uh, between the legs. We see her go and touch her ankle as well. And I think we see that when she thinks she's onto something, when she's getting excited, when she thinks it's actually moving in the right direction, she starts to suppress, restrain herself, soothe herself to calm it down because I think she might be like a dog in the trap. And once the rabbit is running, like the dog's out and she's she's gonna be after it and she's gonna get it. And I think it might be her way of just keeping herself calm and locked down. So she, she doesn't make a potential mistake of going too fast, too far and, and plays it by, um, I think, I guess the methodology and the rhythms that are proven to work time after time after time. Though when the dog sees the rabbit, you wanna you wanna go for it. But lovely to to, to see that elements of self soothing there and adaption there. Uh, Greg, what do you think? Yeah, so this is him with what he's prepared to talk about. And this is later in the interview from the first part. When he gets back to something he's prepared to talk about, he strings phrases together. He's no longer doing these single single syllable utterances. He even appears to have a little bit of a smirk. 
his hands and body are out of that fortress mode, and now he's just guarded. His hands are still up here, uh, but his head and neck are moving, and he's paying attention to the person he's talking to. He goes with his brow up, and he says, to be honest. Well, to be honest, people will say that means you're lying. To me, it means that you are in a push-pull word. What does that mean? I want to ask and negotiate why you use that word, and I want to dig in. Well, what do you mean to be honest? I thought that's what we were doing, and I'll go at you that way because now I get to create some stress in you as I'm talking to you. Then when he says, I didn't want to ride her and, and, and then she asks a simple logic question that causes him to have nervous laughter. This is where I would dig in. He stammers, he does a nervous laugh, and then he goes to the Roundsburg mantra, you know, we're back to phone, dash, floorboard, whatever it is. He's using words. He's saying cop, swerve, chickens, whatever, because his brain is now losing the ability to use language. Anytime he's feels like he's credible and he has a prepared story, he's illustrating, he's making eye contact, and he's out of that grunt and block. Grunt and block is his style when he thinks he's in a bind. So I think we're seeing something that will matter. Scott, what do you got? All right. Um, shoot, he went over a lot of stuff I was going to do. But let's talk about his, about his illustrators. They're not in sync, and they're just, they're really odd at this point. When he said, uh, um, to be honest, he's still doing the leg slapping. We're still seeing all that stuff going on. He's still using his adapters that way. And then he's, as he's speaking, as he's not speaking, he's using the, his illustrators to, in place of the words. It's just really, it just looks weird, man, at this point. That's somebody whose head is on fire in there. They can't, uh, I, I think he, he, I think he knows it's up at this point. Okay, who's got a haircut like Kim Jong un? Okay, that'd be Chase. Go ahead. What do you got? <laughs> so, uh, this reminds me of uh, eating kimchi. <laughs> While testing nuclear weapons. <laughs> Tried to think of somehow to tie that in. I couldn't. <laughs> if this, If he's truthful, that means this woman made up the statement, completely falsified the statement to the police. If she falsified a statement to the police, she has committed a crime. If she has committed a crime, she is a perpetrator. And guess what has vanished in every Ooh. moment of this entire interview? There is no perpetrator. The vanishing perpetrator strikes again. One cool thing, you guys covered a whole lot. Uh, Right at the beginning, there's two adjustments of the thumbs right when he locks back down again. And this is preparation to get them in the right place so that his body is locked in position. And you'll see this much more than you could possibly think. You'll see it if you're watching somebody pitch you on an idea. And Scott is uh, excellent at, at doing that kind of stuff. But right here where he's just reciting these words, that is untruthful because he has not done this before. Some people just speak in these little nouns or these just like nouns and verbs, but he does not. He never has threatened. And this is a long interview. He never does that. So this is a huge, massive uh, red flag here. And right there, when, when they're talking about besides her, it looks honest, probably due to the reasonable expectation uh, like, did you come up beside her in the vehicle? He's, he looks honest here, probably because he knows there's no street cameras in that area where he was initially flipping his lights on and, and doing the stop. She didn't offer that? Mm -hmm. She was nervous. Like I said, she cried earlier. Did she cry as soon as you stopped her or after she was in your car? When did she start crying? I think in the car, yeah. What made you let her go? Number one to be to be honest, okay. I want to get home. Then why'd wanted, you pull her over? It, <laughs> like I said earlier, I just cop swerve DUI, and well, if, I had, if I had if I had if I had I know if I had to do it, I would have done it. But I didn't think that she was past the legal limit. That's just I mean I just would avoid that if I did you at any time. You said you picked her up around 50th and Lincoln. I mean, when you Just, saw her swerve, right. did you at any time, were you always behind her or did you pull up beside her to maybe see who was in the car and then no, pull back she, behind her? She was at 50th and Lincoln, swerved, and I was behind her, so I felt behind her. And then wait you, till were you away. ever beside her? No. 
did your pants come unzipped, unbuttoned, anything while you were standing right there? No. CSI is processing your car right now. Right. And when we stepped out, they found some pubic hairs right in here. <laughs> Could they be yours? No, that's not, I didn't pull my out and didn't do anything right there. Did she? No. Do so you think they could be? No, it's not. No. Nothing of mine. Your pubes couldn't be? No. Right there? No. Has your ever been out by while your I'm car? Up, while I'm working? No. Not working? No. Have you ever had sex in the backseat of your car? I have not. Because, I mean, some people do. You know, no, I mean, no. I'm not saying forced sex, consensual sex. Right. So your has never been in your backseat? Mm-hmm. Is it possible any of this DNA shares? No. It's not. That's, I would like to go, go at it. Not my DNA. Are those pubes going to be yours? No. No. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so I think she makes a mistake and she realizes she makes a mistake here because she gets married to a concept and follows it too far. She asked him about hair from a specific part of his body and whether or not that could be in the car. And she just goes at it and at it and at it and at it. And he may not have hair on that part of his body. And I think he is strong and confident in his denial and laughs about it, not in a nervous laugh, in an outright laugh. So. He didn't direct answer some of these things. He goes back to that fortress. He's in that single syllable until she brings this up, and then he's comfortable. He says, she asked him, did you pull your body part out? And he says, I didn't pull it out. And she picks up that source lead. Well, maybe he didn't, maybe somebody else did. So he, she brings that up and he goes, eh, well, uh, no. And then he tucks his chin in, inhales, and goes to a throw it. No, again, something's up there. He locks down tight. She missed that question about maybe he doesn't have hair. And then she goes another source lead where he says, working, no. She gets it and she goes after him. He goes back into that lockdown and there's nervous laughter, but you can see that he feels like he had a win right here. I think she makes a mistake. Scott, or Chase, what do you got? During this uh, pants question, the chin goes down a little more than normal. And this is a protective behavior. And when they're talking about the hair, the denial, listen closely when you go back. The denial about the hair is about location, about where all this took place. The denial is it didn't happen there. It didn't happen right that there. Too. Yep. And in truthful people, it's more common. They encourage the testing and the analysis of evidence instead of just making a little denial. And are we going to cover 11? I hope so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll get to it. That's all I got. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah. Uh, so what interests me and is becoming kind of apparent from hearing what you're saying, because, again, I'm fresh into this. I don't know the outcome of any of this. And I heard from Chase in between videos that this guy does some kind of bodybuilding. He's a, you know, he's a big, big lad there. So that might suggest why he's calling them on the DNA from hair because there may not be hair in a certain place. Also, it speaks, now I understand he's a bodybuilder, he may well be taking testosterone, which will also mean that he's going to see the world as not so threatening, less risk in the world, which might be why he's managing to keep relatively from what we might expect somebody to do in this situation, relatively calm and collected and knuckled down because he may not be seeing the threats that you and I would be feeling and experiencing in this situation. That's what testosterone, one of the things that testosterone does, it makes the world look way, way less risky to you. And that's why I think, so we get this pen click from her at the end, which would normally, it's an adapter and it's a pacifier because we hear it again and again and again, we might ascribe to uh, some kind of stress, pressure, anxiety. Based on what you said there, Greg, maybe there's a feeling from her that she missed 
something there that she's played it just that little bit wrong we get the anxiety there she turns to her partner in that sense of i think you need to take over or you take this one or where are we going to take this because it didn't quite hit how we'd like it to hit i think he's calling out the dna there and going i don't think you got anything on that one uh scott anything more to add on that one yeah just a little bit i agree with you i think she's she's but it's like a, a car that's trying to get over a hill or something or get over the bump and it can't quite do it but it keeps backing up yeah, that's what i think that that pen thing is about i think she's all worked up at that point i think she she i feel the same way you guys do about it did your pants come unzipped unbuttoned anything while you were standing right there no csi is processing your car right now right. and when we stepped out they found some pubic hairs right in here. Could they be yours? No, that's not, I didn't pull my out and didn't do anything right there. Did she? No. Do so you think they could be? No, it's not, no. Nothing of mine. Your pubes couldn't be no. right there? No. Has your ever been out Did by your my, car? While I'm working, no. Not working? No. Have you ever had sex in the back seat of your car? I have not. Because I mean, some people do. You know, I mean, I'm not saying forced sex, consensual sex. Right. So your ass has never been in your back seat. Mm -hmm. Is what? it possible any of this DNA shares? No. It's not. That's. I would like to go, go at it. Not my DNA. Are those pubes going to be yours? No. No. had so many people sat in that same chair right. that tell us all day long I didn't do this I didn't do this they promise on their baby on their mama right they promise to God and then they come right back we get back these tests and you can't get out of it you right. know I mean once you kind of get basically kind of locked into something there, there's no talking about it right and that's why we would try to give a person every opportunity right because the tests come back you ain't coming back in here. Because we're here, we have a woman that says about, you know, basically being right. Okay, and right. we're calling it by force and all that. Big difference between that and a hookup. Right. And when, to come back if if there's something there and you say no, and she said it was that, you know, you, you see where we're going. Right. With I do. And that's why we always try to give every angle. Right. We wasn't there. Right. So we just got to go off of everything that we see and, and have. Mm -hmm. okay. You understand? No hookup? No hookup. Not even a little hookup? No, not a little hookup. No booby. No booby. I saw so, no breasts. Did she see your... No. I'm just trying to think of anything that she could have misconstrued. Or why? Why did she get all this trouble? I don't know. Did you do anything that pissed her off? And that's what I'm saying. I don't think I did anything when I was talking to her. I don't know, wasn't rude. She was cooperative. I wasn't at a point where I'd be like, okay, you're going to jail or something or whatnot. I don't think I made any like threats to make, you know, to get in the car, like I said, or anything like that. Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah, so I, I like the way she goes on this, which is to lighten the mood there. You know, quite an animated voice there, almost a cartoon character, a very young cartoon character. N you know, uh, not even a little hook up, she says, trying to lighten the mood. She's using childish words now or colloquial words for, you know, parts of the body, the secondary female characteristics and uh, softening that. But it's interesting, he's going for anatomical words, more adult words around that. So he's not going to join her on this particular, you know, route that she kind of quite like him to take to soften this idea. More anatomical, more adult there. Uh, you know, I love what she's doing with her, thing. her fingers there. She's, she's, super excited and i don't know whether she's trying to indicate that to him like we're running out of ideas and trying to get him to fill stuff or this is truly her she gets excited and she has to calm herself down but what most um 
jumps out for me is I wasn't rude. I don't think I made any threats. Well, if you're very definite about that, you weren't rude, but you're uncertain. I don't think that I made any threats. I mean, I think you would, you would know if you know, you're not rude, you know, you didn't make any threats. So, so there's a strong possibility for me that some threats were made there. Scott, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I agree with you on that part. Again, he's not reacting or responding the way he should for this kind of thing. At some at some parts, he's laughing, and his brain just must be on fire, man, because he knows he's against the wall at this point. But he's still doing that, like Greg talks about that nervous laugh. Good lord, I mean, it's just so that's got to be so tough on his, on 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 what's going on on him and his brain in there. Uh, and there's that wall again. You know, he's getting closer and closer, backed into that corner. Now, physics tells us if he gets any closer to that crack, to that corner, he's going to be able to see into the future at this point. So I don't think he can get any closer than that without saying, okay, it's over. And his answers are really quiet. They're not forceful, not even a little bit. I I think he knows. I think he knows it's up. He's still, I don't know. I, I just think there's, there's, there's not much left here for him to, to defend and I think he knows that's why it's getting so weak I think at this point Chase what do you got I think at this point this is where the bait question should really be hammered in this mm-hmm. is the spot this is the location for the bait question and the, the perfect one especially in many of these cases that are just like this is is there any possible way that this person could accurately or even remotely describe your genitals or pubic area in any way. And if they can describe it, the person's going to have to wonder, like they've gotten some kind of testimony. What has this person said? How, what have they gotten from this other person? But the technique she's using here is called narrative scarcity. And this is your last chance with us here. Once we walk out of the room, we can't help you. And this is it. We want to make sure that your story's right. We want to help you get this, get ahead of the problem, all this kind of stuff. This is the last chance. But he actually says the words, I don't think I made any threats. How could any human being who, especially a law enforcement officer, be uncertain about whether or not there was some threat to get a person into the back seat and take off their pants? It's surprising uh, to me that they didn't just jump into this with like a, 12 gauge. Anyway, uh, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, guys, I I had my threat comment here. You guys have covered that in great detail. So I'm going to jump to something else. Every interrogator on earth knows to use threat and rescue. Good cop, bad cop, Mutt and Jeff. There's names for it everywhere. And if you don't believe that, the people who came back from Vietnam from the Noi Hilton called it threat and rescue. They could identify the ploy that was being used by the North Vietnamese interrogators. So it's common and it works and here's why it works watch what happened here he's locked down he sees the threat as the the male investigator clearly because he's in fortress again and he's being helpful and grunting little short syllable answers and then she jumps in there mark with your funny joking and she becomes the good cop that gets him to start talking again and when he starts to talk he starts to bleed information he does that nervous laugh he's in fact amused look at his face he's falling for the fact she's just like using childlike words if you don't think it's working here's the best one to show you he starts to illustrate again and his feet turn and face her they point toward her something is going on in his head and that's how we always know A a lot of times i'll often say I'm always the threat, so somebody else can be the rescue. The guy who is raising a lot of noise and putting pressure on somebody is a prop. The interrogator is the person who's being friendly, and you just need to know that. Watch what happens. We've had so many people sat in that same chair right. that tell us all day long, I didn't do this, I didn't do this. They promise on their baby, on their mama. Right. They promise to God. And then they come right back. We get back these tests, and you can't get out of it. You right. know. I mean, once you kind of get basically kind of locked into something there there's no talking about it right and that's why we would try to give a person every opportunity right because if you know, the tests come back you ain't coming back in here because we're here we have a woman that says about you know basically being right okay and right. we're calling it by force and all that big difference between that and a hookup right and to come back if if there's something there and you say no and she said it was that 
you know you, you see where we're going right I do and that's why we always try to give every angle right we wasn't there right so we just got to go off of everything that we see and, and have mm-hmm. okay. you understand no hookup no hookup not even a little hookup no not a little hookup no booby no booby I saw no breasts did she see your no I'm just trying to think of anything that she could have misconstrued or why why did she go to all this trouble I don't know did you do anything that pissed her off that's what I'm saying I don't think I did anything when I was talking to her I don't know, was it rude? She was cooperative. I wasn't at a point where I'd be like, okay, you're going to jail or something or whatnot. I don't think I made any like threats to make, you know, to get in the car, like I said, or anything like that. I didn't hear a lot of drunk questions, you know, like uh, how much have you been drinking? Mm -hmm. Uh, Mainly it's just have you been drinking, trying to get her confessed, see anything inside that juice? No. Um, why are you driving so late at two o'clock? I don't know where are you going, going to Arbor uh, on the west side. Where are you? Who are you gonna see? Just trying to just talk to her. But, okay, uh, right there. Those questions maybe took forty seconds, fifteen minutes. And you said five at the car. So then we got ten of a lot of questions. Right. Okay. I mean, you tell me it wasn't there. I mean, well, obviously, I don't have any audio. And, I'm, and, I'm not, and that's what I'm saying. Roughly on a traffic stop, take about 20 minutes. It was the quickest traffic stop, about 15 minutes. That's your quickest traffic stop? No. Okay, I'm you're a slow poke. I'm not, I, don't, I don't really get 1090 at all or anything like that, but I, I but, take my time sometimes. But you didn't write her tickets. Didn't write her ticket. You didn't write her. Didn't write her. You didn't even put yourself out. Didn't put myself out. How in. could you take 15 minutes on that? Just talking. I must have been talking. So that's it. I don't. I can't see her wanting to talk if she's crying and asking if you're going to shoot her and all this. I don't see her being real forthcoming with conversation. Whether my questions or whatnot, that's it. I'm... Chase, what do you got? So I've got one sentence here. Uh, to describe the whole scenario that we just saw in this clip. The woman has details for those 15 minutes. He does not for those 15 minutes. That's all you need. And this is textbook concealment decision. It's 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 deception. We're think we gotta think in terms when you watch any of these videos in the future, what's being hidden, what's missing, and this is exactly what I call a detail valley. That any time there's tons of tons of details and then it goes into a valley where there's no detail whatsoever and it's skipped over and then it goes right back out. So when you hit a detail valley, there's a ton of stuff missing. There's something being concealed. That's all I got. Scott? I think this is the worst for him so far. And he's talking about pulling over another person, not running them and not giving them a ticket and not putting himself out when they when they talk about running them. That means they're they're uh, seeing who they are. They're um, call it they are seeing are they a criminal or do they have a background that's not good that kind of thing and when you say uh putting yourself out you didn't put yourself out he's when you pull someone over like i said i'm not a cop I've never been one but i know this is what they do is they when you, you call it putting yourself out or or i'm out at so you tell the dispatcher where you are so if anything happens i know where to send people so everything comes up nowadays you can see where they are on a big map but that's what that's what they're talking about there. If this guy is doing that, if he pulls up somebody, pulls them over, and doesn't even say, "Hey, I'm pulling somebody over," something's up, and it's not the first time he's done it. So, I think this is the worst for him so far. Greg, what do you got? Let's make it this very simple. Most lies are going to fall into four categories: all lies, omission, commission, embellishment, or transference. The lies of omission. I'm going to tell you the whole story except for the bad parts. That's exactly what he's doing. He's hiding time. Well, the reason they're asking him about time is they know procedure. They probably wrote it. They're senior officers. So what they're doing is they're saying, you should have done these things. Why didn't you do that? And why did it take so long for you to do the things that you did do? So if you walk through the whole process, you get him starting off. 
He's editing as he speaks. He says Arbor, not Ann Arbor. He earlier said Ann Arbor. He is now saying Arbor. He does a, high, a hard eye contact with her when she calls him out and said that should have been 40 seconds. Hard eye contact. He recognizes the threat, and his face kind of looks fallen. If you notice, his lower face goes flat. He's gone from brace now to putting his hands in front of his groin, and his body slumps. That's pre-confession. That's getting to pre-confession when you get there. He pushes his feet together and forward, and then he goes back to this whole thing of bracing, and she brilliantly comes back to that good cop release, and she gets him comfortable enough when she starts joking around with him about being a slowpoke that he actually adapts, moves around, and then does the batter on box, rubs his thighs. That's powerful. That means she just realized she's got to play the good cop. He, he, when he says talk, he must have been talking. She turns it around on him, goes at him again really hard and says, why would she talk to you? To see his mouth, his forehead and his head shake and the rise of his hands. I can't explain it. She knows he can't. She's got him on the ropes. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, totally agree. That lightning of the situation with the slow poke, which seems like a bit of a joke, but it's kind of a neg move, draws him in. He emits the laughter. You get that self-soothing with the hands on the legs there, and he's now moved into her. Um, my, uh, my, th that whatnot, go back and replay whatnot. If it was, if whatnot wasn't important, you just get whatnot. Okay, what we get is what not. There's about three or four movements in the knot. That means that there's something unsubstantial in that. There's something hidden in it somewhere. Like what is what is ten minutes of what not? It's like go go back and, and listen to it. It's an extraordinary piece of music that goes on there. Uh, so beautiful move there and elicits from him not only self-soothing but a cadence in one word that is totally out of his baseline go back listen to it let's see some samples on the internet of that you know let's get dead mouse doing a full a full extended 45 version dance mix of that one it's going to be amazing okay <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear a lot of drunk questions, you know, like, uh, how much have you been drinking? Mm -hmm. oh, mainly it was just, have you been drinking? Try to get a confess. Is anything inside that juice? No. Um, why are you driving so late at two o'clock? I don't know. Where are you going? Going to Arbor uh, on the west side. Where are you, who are you going to see? Just trying to just talk to her. But, okay, uh, right there, those questions maybe took 40 seconds. 15 minutes? And he said five at the car. So then we got 10 of a lot of questions. Right. Okay. I mean, you tell me I wasn't there. I mean, well, obviously, then, I don't have any then, audio. Then, then, then that's what I'm saying. Roughly on a traffic stop, take about 20 minutes. It was a quicker traffic stop, about 15 minutes. That's your quickest traffic stop? No. Okay, you're a slowpoke. I'm not, I don't, I don't really get 1090 at all or anything like that, but I, I take my time sometimes. But you didn't write her tickets. Didn't write her ticket. You didn't write her. Didn't write her. You didn't even put yourself out. Didn't put myself How out. How could you take 15 minutes on that? Just talking. I must have been talking. So. That's it. I, don't, I can't see her wanting to talk if she's crying and asking if you're going to shoot her and all this. I don't see her being real forthcoming with the conversation. Whether my questions or whatnot, that's it. Oh. Well, let's throw it around the room and uh, see what we get. Let's wrap it up in 30 seconds or less and say what we think about what we've seen. Mark, you want to go first? Yeah, I didn't know where this one was going to go at the, at the start. I mean, it, it starts it starts quite lightly, and I'm not sure, sure exactly how well uh, these interviewers are going, and the subject there is really locked down, but it doesn't take many moves to elicit what we get in that last video. And as Greg was saying, he's he's on the ropes and he's on his way out. And um, I, I think he's he's inside and he's doing time as he as he very well should be. Chase. I'll just do it one sentence here. The problem with locking down is that it either shuts off or screws up the behaviors that should be there with a truthful person. 
it shuts them down, screws them up. Greg? Yeah, you can hide a lot of things, but you can't hide everything. And when you choose to make a way of behavior work for you, and it's that lockdown, the Hulk, I'm going to grunt and I'm going to sit there and embrace myself. Anytime that changes, it's a deviation in baseline. And that's what we all love. Scott, what do you got? I think this is a great example of two interrogators working well together. I think they've, they've probably done this for a long time. And I think they did an excellent job, actually. And uh, watching this guy, he doesn't change a whole lot. A lot of people are going to think this is, may think this is fairly boring because he's not doing a lot. But as, as you've seen from us talking about him, there's a whole lot going on there. So I think that's it's a good lesson, I think, to see or to, to understand that just because there's not a lot going on that you can see once you become observant and know how to observe these things, this is what we're trying to teach you. Then you see all these these little things are such a big deal. So that's what I got. All right, fellas, think this was a good one, and uh, we'll see you next time. See you. Mr. Holsclaw, this jury finds you guilty of the various uh, counts. You will be remanded to the custody of the Oklahoma County Sheriff for formal sentencing set January 21st, 2016 at 10 o'clock a.m. I'll be sad and I'll hang it, I'll see the silhouette.